everyone, my name's Rachel. Welcome to C3 Reach Miranda Church Online this morning. Can't believe we're almost at the end of January. Where did all of that time go? I'm so glad that you're here for this service. We've got um, a great devotional um, message from Pastor Jo and a bit of an update as she's back from holidays. We've got some worship from David and Shirin, um, as well as some of our other C3 Reach churches. And we've got a great message from the mama of the house, Pastor Chris Pringle, uh, co-founder with her husband, Phil, of the C3 Global Movement. So it's going to be a beautiful service. I hope you enjoy. While you're here, uh, since we're on YouTube, I thought I'd take this very quick opportunity to just remind you, if you would like to see more of our videos, if you'd like to be notified when we have services upcoming or other special events that we are popping up on our YouTube page, then just hit the subscribe button that's below this video. And you can also click the bell if you'd like to turn on notifications. So that'll let you know when we've got a new video um, coming up so that you don't miss a thing. Hope you guys enjoy the service. I'll see you on the other side.
Hi everyone, it's so good to uh, be back from leave. Uh, the Wilton family have had a fabulous January, just having some R&R, &R, enjoying our time uh, down the south coast. Uh, I also went on a retreat for a couple of days out at Cornell. It was just so wonderful to um, you know, spend time in God's presence, just praying, praying for all of you, um, praying for our church, praying for uh, the year ahead in 2022. Um, a few quick thank yous. I wanted to uh, say a huge thank you to Cara and Graham for holding the fort uh, while I've been away. And uh, also, um, as you can see, we are um, pre-recorded this Sunday. We've had some uh, technical issues and I wanted to say a big thank you to um, to Graham and to Stephen and Rach um, for spending some time this week, um, getting some temporary fixes for us uh, and also um, organising and discussing what we need. Um, we're having a consultant come in next week uh, and we're also, we're going to be looking at, you know, we've kind of reached a bit of a critical stage um, with our tech. And uh, so we are looking at upgrading our projector and our um, downstairs computers with the, you know, sound and multimedia desk. Um, so we're gonna get some quotes on that. I'll actually keep you informed, let you know what those quotes are looking like because we may have um, to kick off 2022, um, a bit of a project-based tech fundraiser, um, which will give us all the opportunity um, to be able to contribute um, to this you know, pretty important upgrade, um, which will benefit our in-person and our online services. So um, I will keep you posted uh, on that. Well, as I say, I have had some wonderful times um, over the past month and uh, just, you know, praying and, and being in God's presence. And uh, there's just a, um, a short picture that I, I wanted to share with you um, that I thought would be really helpful. Um, and it's something that the Lord impressed upon me. And uh, it's quite a, a, I thought it was a bit of a funny picture, really. Um, it was about, I don't know if you watch the Olympics, um, you know, all the, the canoeists and, you know, those whitewater rafters, I think they're called the slalom. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, for me, I don't know about you, but I would love, I, when, when I get my shoulders kind of all working again, I so want to just get myself like a kayak. I know Craig and Rosie have got one. They've got like in, these inflatable kayaks. I would love one of those. Um, and I just want to kind of cruise along, you know, on the still and calm waters. Don't we all want to cruise along on the still and calm waters? But I feel like the last couple of years hasn't really been still and calm, has it? It's been more like the Olympic um, slalom event where they're like in the white water and they've kind of got to navigate to get through the gates. And it reminded me of John 10 when Jesus said, I am the gate um, for my sheep. And, and I thought, wow, you know, when they're in that race, they've just, you know, it takes a lot of strength and it takes a lot of courage, I think, but they've just got to keep their eyes on that next gate. Where do I, how do I get there? And I think it's a good reminder for us, let's just keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And he's there, he's the gatekeeper. He helps us go in and out. But he also promises for us that even when we're in those choppy waters, um, that he leads us, it says in Psalm 23, you know, beside still waters, and refreshes our soul. And so I'm like, even when we're in the choppy waters, just keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who's the gate. You know, and you know, the Bible talks a lot as well about, you know, following that narrow path. Um, when we're in those choppy waters, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And you know, of course, he's not promising that it's all just gonna be calm waters from here on in, but he takes us into those times of refreshing. I see at the end of those races, you know, where they come down and they've gone through, they've navigated through all the gates and then they're kind of in this like little pool. I'm like, oh, that's where I wanna be. I wanna be in that little pool, just kind of gliding around. And um, anyway, I hope that's a helpful message for you. It certainly was for me and I, I felt to share it with you. Um, let's remember that um, as we keep our eyes on Jesus, as we lean into him and remember that he's the gate, he's the one that we, got to stay focused on. Um, he's the Prince of Peace. So even in the choppy waters, um, he helps us through and he does promise to take us into those places of refreshing. Um, and that doesn't have to be only once a year. The Lord reminded me of that as well. But even on a daily basis, we can come before him and uh, we can be refreshed 
in his presence. So, um, and speaking of which, we've got a great message coming up this morning and I, I thought it probably segues quite nicely um, from, from, from that um, picture that I've just shared with you. And it's Pastor uh, Chris Pringle uh, and she's sharing about going the distance. And I thought, well, that's kind of, in a way, um, reminds me a little bit about those, um, those Olympic uh, races. They really have to go the distance, don't they? So um, enjoy this message. Why don't we just pray? Um, you know, for, before we um, before we head in into uh, the rest of this service, Lord, we thank you um, that Jesus is the gate, it's the great shepherd of His sheep, and uh, we're so thankful, Lord, that you're a loving God. We thank you that you sent Jesus to be with us. We thank you that um, you sent your great Holy Spirit to be with us, the spirit of Jesus, to guide us and lead us, especially when we're in those choppy waters, to help us get through those gates and to spend time in your presence, Lord, where we can come into like the sheepfold and, and be um, with you beside those still waters where our souls are refreshed. And so, Lord, this morning, even as we gather, we thank you, Lord, for times of refreshing and that we would hear from you. And uh, we give you all honour in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hope you enjoy the service. Hi, church family. I am so, so, so happy to be with you today. Well, my name is Chris Pringle of C3 Church Global, married to the wonderful Phil Pringle. And if you're in church today for the first time, I want to welcome you into this space where I'll be sharing the Word of God today with my message, Go the Distance. So really, Go the Distance relates to every single one of us, pastors, leaders, students, Bible college students, and of course, every person who would call themselves a disciple of Christ. So are you ready today? I, I am so, feel so privileged to be bringing this word of God to you today. Well, you know, right now we are living in a climate of global upheaval, dare I say it. And we've all been affected by the pandemic. Isolation, lockdowns, homeschooling, church life interrupted, and most tragically, I'm not laughing here, the loss of loved ones. I want to extend my heartfelt love and condolences to those of us who have lost loved ones during the season. I'm also aware that many pastors have faced leadership challenges. I honour you today and we stand side by side with you in building healthy churches. Well, you know, as a woman who's been in the work of the ministry for 50 years. Can you believe that? I know I look too young. It's the lighting in here. <laughs> but I do feel the burden and the pressures uh, of, on ministry life and family life as you do. And I hopefully am here to help. So to remind us that we can get through anything we face if we go the distance together. Can you turn to someone right now and give them a little nudge or if you're allowed, put your arm around them and say, we're in this together. So let's just commit this moment to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, let your word and my thoughts feed us today, strengthen us, encourage us, ignite faith in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you know, people ask me often, how I am still running this race and still smiling. And my family would probably say, she smiles most of the time, but not always. Hey, I'm human like you. And I'm no theologian, theolog I am no theologian, see? Definitely not a theologian. But I think that the years of experience in serving Jesus and building the house of God has given me just a few tips that I'd like to share with you today. So really in an overall little sentence, I would say, follow the direction of God's word, be in prayer, follow good counsel and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And these four essentials have kept me on the straight and narrow and the liberating pilgrim's path, dare I say in brackets, most of the time, because as you know, I'm only human. So I love a good poem. And for those of you who have known me over many years, I love uh, the Pilgrim's poem by John Bunyan. And so let's 
say it together if you do know it. Who would true valor see? Let him come hither. One here will constant be, come wind, come weather. There's no discouragement shall make him once relent his first avowed intent. I love that word, intent, to be a pilgrim. Whoso beset him round with dismal stories do but themselves confound his strength the more is. No foe can stay his might. Though he with giants fight, he will make good his right to be a pilgrim. Hobgoblin nor foul fiend can daunt his spirit. He knows he at the end shall life inherit. Then fancies flee away. He'll fear not what men say. He'll labor night and day to be a pilgrim. And of course, for those of you who like a biblical uh, kind of reference, that's taken from Hebrews 11, <laughs> Hebrews 11. Anyway, so thousands of stories of fellow pilgrims and heroes of the faith are our witnesses and they cheer us on. I love that. Go the distance. We are not alone in this wonderful race towards the finish line. And I want to, to remind you all today, no matter where you sit in the house of God, a family member, a dad, a worker, a mum, a pastor, a leader, a student, we are all on this wonderful pilgrimage together. You know, I have a dear friend in the ministry, you'll know of her probably, Bobby Houston writes in her book, Stay the Path. We are privileged to be 21st century runners, the ones who have the, have the plethora of wisdom and experience to draw from. The ancient trailblazers and many others since have gone ahead. They wait for us in heaven. And if we believe the words of Hebrews 12, they are carrying us on. So let's take heart in the human story we find ourselves in and play our part. Oh, I love that. You know, in Hebrews chapter 12, let's have a look at it. If you've got your Bibles with you, turn with me to Hebrews 12. As for us, uh, we, we all have these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin uh, we so easily fall into, then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination. For the path has been already marked out before us. Oh, I love that. We look away from the natural realm and we fasten our gaze on Jesus who birthed faith in us and who leads us forth into faith's perfection. In other words, we have all these witnesses Friends, fellow pilgrims, don't quit. So I've got a few tips for the go the distance crowd. And I know that's you. Go the distance, Christians and leaders, don't quit. Just keep walking through every season. I ain't going to lie that some days are going to be totally, I can't say the word, but the pressure will tell you, run, run, run. In a recent wonderful, I do the daily devotional with Nicky Gumbel. He writes this about pressure that comes on us. Don't be afraid of pressure. Pressure is what transforms a lump of coal into a diamond. <laughs> That's what, I, when I read this, I was like, thanks, I know it. Life can be seen as a series of pressures. We test things by putting them under pressure. God is not impressed by what we say we will do. He is impressed by what we do when we are put under pressure. Progress in life and ministry happens when you are tried and tested and you pass the test. Turn to someone, give them a dig. Ouch, that one hurt. So, Okay, the next thing, the next little tip I have is go the distant leaders and Christians, run with the pack. In other words, don't be a lone wolf. Don't, don't try and do it on your own. You will not survive. And uh, 
We've all seen those programs, those uh, geographical programs where, you know, the lone poor animal leaves the pack, stops to have eat crunch crunch on that little bush, and there lying in the bushes is the, is the evil uh, predator. And the pack runs on, and this poor lone ranger little animal chomp, gets chomped. So run with the pack. And I love this beautiful scripture in Philippians 3. You turn uh, with me, verse 12 to 15. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. I don't depend on my own strength to do this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature have the same passion. Another translation says, let's have the same mind. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. Now, this next bit is so great concerning the pack. And let us all advance together, together to reach this victory prize, following one path with one passion. I love that. I love that because Paul is talking about us as a tribe, as a pack to stay together. Let us all advance together. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't even go into it, but I have many, many friends who decided to go it alone over these 50 years. And sadly, uh, I have witnessed uh, the slow retreat of good leaders uh, and Christians even, even members, church members, that they have decided to, to, to be solitary. I don't need to be in the house of God to love Jesus. I can serve God and worship God out on the waves on my surfboard. You know what happens? They begin, this is, it's the slow retreat. They wander in late, talk, chew gum during prayer, criticize the preacher. Oh my gosh, please never do that church. And and there's no celebration. When there's a celebration of coming together, they're off doing their own thing. So guys, stay in the pack. I am who I am today. Love me or leave me. Because of the people who have surrounded my life, these definitely in Sydney, these 40 plus years. Now, <laughs> I won't blame them for my naughtiness, but who I am, I've been formed in that fellowship of being together uh, with friends and leaders in prayer, in vision, in fellowship, in time off, holidaying together and having lots and lots of fun or silliness, as my good friend Simon McIntyre would say. You see, there's good naughty and there's bad naughty. I'm talking about the good naughty. Be welded together, dreaming together, grieving together and celebrating together. And I know you're smiling as you look around in your congregations and have a look, send a wave to the people that are in your tribe and in your pack. So stay in the sustainable pace of the pack. That's so beautiful. That's so wonderful. Stick with the good guys and then you will, you will be following Jesus. You know, in our early ministry life, I guess everything is a test. This was a big one. We were at a minister's gathering. Oh, we're just brand new baby pastors. And this might uh, be you here today. And this guy got up and he talked about the cost of the ministry. And it, the, the, mes the message just got worse and worse. It was talking about giving up, uh, you know, all sorts of things and that maybe your children will die. And it just, it just went from bad to worse. I went back to our cabin and I was like, Lord, You've got the wrong girl that I'm not cut out for that. And the Lord very clearly, very beautifully spoke to my heart and said, 
it's not going to be like that for you, Chris. He didn't tell me the whole story. <laughs> he didn't say the different trials that were coming up, but he comforted my heart. In the then and now, you are going to be okay. And another situation not far uh, beyond that, we're at, um, we'd been at another minister's gathering and this minister who we adored uh, had taught us so much. He was like a mentor to Phil in many th things regarding the wonderful Holy Spirit. And it came out that he had been in multiple uh, relationships with, with women in his church and outside his church. And, you know, the Lord spoke to me really clearly. I was devastated. I was like, no, what is this? Uh, and in that moment, I learned a very important lesson. And I think all of us need to learn it. I am, we are Christians before we are ministers, leaders, disciples, sons, daughters, business people. And Jesus reminded me of that scripture. I'll just paraphrase it uh, today for time in John 21, where, um, where Jesus is, t is t and Peter are having this conversation. And he's like, well, what about me? What's going to happen to me? And Jesus, he doesn't brush off, but he almost does. He, he brushes off the question and says to Peter, what is that to you? You follow me. And pretty much that's what the Lord said to me. Hey, Chris, it's none of your business. I'm looking after all that. You keep your eyes on me and follow me. That's why I love that song. I have decided to follow Jesus. Whenever stuff happens and situations happen, I remind myself that before I am any, uh, you know, credentialed person, I am a Jesus follower. And that's what a Christian means, Christ within. So let's keep Jesus at the center of our life and at the center of our world. How liberating is that? Follow Jesus. Don't compare. Don't copy. Be who you, you are meant to be in Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, you might be like me. You like bright colors. Wear bright colors. You might like to wear um, gray or neutrals all the time. Be who you are. Wear that. You and I look together, look good together in a photo. It's like, you know, the colorful one and then the one that's mild. What a lovely combination. Be who you are in Christ. Follow him. Find your identity in Jesus Christ. And then no matter what happens around you, who succeeds, who falls, you will remain the, the same. A, a disciple of Jesus Christ. The next thing that a go-the-distance leader does, or Christian, is we find a sustainable pace. Oh, I love that. Hey, life is long. It's a marathon race, not a sprint. Uh, recently, Pastor Phil and I were having lunch uh, outdoors in our deck chairs with, with friends in our neighbourhood. And um, they, maybe just a few years ago, handed over the leadership of their church. It was a very successful church and have decided to go into a Christian consultancy business. And I was talking with her about our upcoming transition and she was asking me how I'm going. And I said, yeah, I'm going pretty good. Um, I'm going pretty good. And she said, what you're going to love uh, is, is afterwards, as you enter a new season of your life, you will find a different pace. I liked that. It was good counsel to me. It was wise counsel. You're not just going to drop off the planet, but you're going to find a different track. You know, I'm going to still be walking, but there's going to be a slight little in the road over there. And I loved that. So uh, I love that. So look, Pastor Phil has got a brand new book coming out. Uh, probably, well, it'll be definitely online soon. And I've just been reading through it to do the, the finishing edits. And I love this little quote to do with this very subject. Uh, it's called Disciple, uh, his book. And he poses this question in terms of going the distance. And I quote, whatever lifestyle we set for ourselves, ask, can I sustain this till I'm old? What a great question, Pastor Phil. Can I sustain this till I'm old? Finishing well is our goal. Is your lifestyle sustainable? Sometimes I see all those young bucks down the beach and they're sprinting, they're sprinting, they're sprinting. They're like 22. And I'm like, I know that a day will come when they will have to change their pace. And it will be more like a, 
beach shovel, <laughs> the shovel, the shovel down on the sand. It doesn't mean you stop, you just change your pace. So friends, find a sustainable pace that works uniquely for you. Take your time. The dream takes longer than you think. Doesn't mean you don't write it down. Write it down, date it, because when that fulfillment comes, you will be able to go, woo! But hey, just remember, life is a marathon and things don't seem to happen as quickly as we want. God seems slow when we are in a hurry. Enjoy the journey. Settle in for the long haul. When it gets too tough, don't throw in the towel. Just hang it up for a bit. You know, I'd have a hook if I could, but just hang it up for a bit. That seems good. And uh, take a break. Take a break. Have a sabbatical. Have a long service leave. Proper holidays with family and friends. Check in with good friends. Get some counsel. Do something you love. Do something you. Buy a bike. Ride a bike. Go riding with a friend. Plant a tree. Dig a garden. Read a book or two. Do a course of interest that you've always wanted to do. But just allow your pace to give you room to love life as well. So, run away. No, run to Jesus. Go the distance leaders, run to Jesus. I've already said it, but I'll repeat it. We are first Christians before we are pastors or leaders or CEOs or mums or teachers or professors or students, AAA students. And sometimes the ministry can become bigger than the one we serve. So let Christ within be our centre, not the church or our ministry or indeed our title or what comes after our name. You know, um, in preparing this, I was thinking a song just kept going through my mind. It's by Ryan Smith on one of his albums and it's called The Hiding Place. And I don't know about you, but there's one way to center our hearts in Jesus and that's through praise and worship. And this little song, please forgive me, I won't linger on it, but I wanna just show you what I do when I feel like, oh, wow, and my mind starts like that. I go to worship and this song is beautiful and you can download it, um, you know, on the website of Ryan Smith at some stage, but it goes, Holy Spirit, I hang on every word you say. Every morning you set me up for every day. Lead me, I pray, light up my way. Fill me again, I'm waiting on you, I'm breaking through, I'm following, ooh. You always point me back to Jesus, ooh. You help me to forgive. I come alive when I am in your presence, Holy Spirit forever stay with me, etc. And hey, well, even when I sing that, I feel the peace of God. I feel like oh, taking a breather with Jesus. So get away with Jesus. Isaiah 40 says this, do you not know, have you not heard the everlasting God, the creator of the earth? He doesn't become tired or grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives strength uh, to the weary and to him that has no might. He increases power. Even youths grow weary and tired and, and vigorous men stumble badly. But those who wait upon the Lord, who expect, look for and hope in him will gain strength and renew their power. How beautiful, live above the winds of adversity on eagle's wings, wings with Jesus. Amen. So guys, I'm going over time. Enjoy the journey. You know the old saying, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Take a break before you have one. Farmers rest the soil after seven years. They rest it before they sow new seed. So take a break. Here's just some of the things that are a warning against signs of you need to take a break. Mood swings, 
overindulging in alcohol or other stimulants, disinterest in the church, temper flare-ups, sleeplessness, anxiety, small things popping your cork, tension at home, tension in the marriage, avoiding conflict, and you're so, so tired. So, hey, come to Jesus. Really, at the end of the day, everything about going the distance is coming back to Jesus, who is the heart and the center of everything that we are and do, no matter what our role, no matter what our age, no matter what our cultural background or our religious background, Jesus is the one who we come to. Are you weary, Matthew 11 says, carrying a heavy burden? Come to me. I will refresh your life for I am your oasis. Oh, I love that. Jesus, you are my oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me. For all that I require of you, of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. I love that. I just love that. To go the distance, we follow Christ. And what happens is something miraculous happens in our characters, in our inner spirit, in our soul, that we become pleasant and easy to bear. We, be, we stay teachable. The L plate. Oh, I'm in many situations. I'm like, I'm a learner. Teach me, teach me, teach me, Holy Spirit. Help me listen. When I ask for counsel, I do it. And Phil and I, over the years, if we've ever gone to ask counsel of a leader for direction or something that's truly, truly a burden on our heart, we go and we say, Holy Spirit, we're trusting that you are going to guide us and the wisdom that we receive from their counsel, we will do. So we're teachable. Go the distance, people are always teachable. <sighs> so be a pupil of the Word of God. Be a pupil of Jesus Christ. Always be learning and open to good counsel. And I know that you will uh, go the distance and make it to the finish line, where, which is the ultimate goal, isn't it? To be in, uh, before Christ where he says, hey, welcome, good and faithful servant. So here Paul says in his letter to the Philippians, in his closing words, and I hope he doesn't mind, but I've snuck a bit of it in my parting prayer for you, and I've paraphrased it. My dear friends in C3, Pastor Phil and I, servants of Jesus, the Anointed One, we write this letter to all his devoted followers in your city, including your pastors and to all the servant leaders of the church, which is all of you. May the blessings of divine grace and supernatural peace that flows from God our Father and our Messiah, the Lord Jesus, be upon your lives. Until we meet face to face, let us pursue Christ and run our race, committed to go the distance together with all our love to all of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Restore to me the 
Wasn't that a fantastic message from Pastor Chris Pringle about going the distance in our, in our faith? And I think it really finishes off, really nicely wraps up January, where we've heard some great messages from Cara and Graham and now Pastor Chris as well, that are practical, helpful, um, just revitalize us in our faith, encourage us for the year ahead, and uh, really give us practical ways to live out our Christian faith. And uh, I just wanted to give this opportunity, if today's message really spoke to you, or if you uh, have never made the commitment to uh, to be invite Jesus into your heart, to be Lord and Saviour over your life, uh, then we'd love to pray with you. Uh, even if that's something that you maybe did a long time ago, but haven't done for a while, we would love you. There's a, a few links below where you can uh, either email us or get in touch via YouTube or even fill out a form. And uh, we'd love to pray with you. Our team would love to get in touch with you, get a Bible to you and encourage you on your Christian walk. So I hope you enjoyed this morning's service and we'll see you again same time next week.